Hey guys, welcome back to this game development series where we are making a 2D mobile game using Flutter and Flame Engine. So till now we have added almost all the necessary features required to make this game playable. Like we have these nice character animations, ability to jump, and a score system and a health system. And in the last video we used widget overlays to display a pause menu when the game is paused and a game over menu when Dino runs out of lives and players can even restart the game from this game over menu. So the next important thing that we need is a main menu screen. The screen will be useful for allowing players to change some game settings and see the credits if they want before they start the game. Now as main menu will be the first screen that should be shown to users, we'll have to make sure that it is set as the home property in our material app. Right now, this is set to my home page, which internally creates an instance of Dino game and returns its widget. So first, I'll create a new folder called screens. And in this folder, I'll create a new class for main menu. This class will extend from stateless widget because I don't want to change anything on this page dynamically. For now, I'll just display the name of the screen in center of the scaffold. And now, in the material app, we can change the home property to main menu. Next, we have this my home page class, which is a stateful widget. This class also does not change anything dynamically. So this should also be a stateless widget. And as this represents a new screen in the game, I'll create a new file in screens folder called game underscore play dot dart. This file will contain a stateless widget called gameplay. In here, we can create a new instance of Dino game and return its widget as body of a scaffold. And now, we can remove this my home page class from main.dart. Okay, so now let's start working on main menu. On main menu, I want to display a button on pressing which will navigate users to the gameplay screen. But having a plain main menu with just the flutter widgets does not look good. So, what I'll do is, I'll display the in-game background on main menu and on top of that, we'll create the play button. So to display this background, I'll copy an asset called background.png in asset slash images folder. I have created this image by merging all the parallax images into a single image. This image will be available in GitHub repository linked in the description. So to display this image as background on main menu, We'll wrap this center widget inside a container widget. And containers have a decoration property which can be used to display images in background. So I'll set decoration to box decoration. And its image property will be decoration image. And for this decoration image, I'll set the image property as an asset image with part to the background image that we just copied. So let's run this to see how it looks in the app. Okay. Clearly, the image is much smaller as compared to the screen size. So to make sure that we cover the entire screen, I'll set the width and height of this container to width and height of the current screen. This can be done by getting the size from media query dot of context. But this will just increase the size of container. To make the image cover the container entirely, I'll set the fit property of decoration image to box fit dot cover. And if I save this, you can see that the image is now full screen. Next, let's display the title of this game and a play button instead of this text widget. For that, I'll use a card widget. Inside this card, I'll add a column which will display the title of game as a text widget and play button as a raised button. Let's change the background color of card to transparent black. For the game title, I'll set the font size to 60 and color to white. And to bring everything to center, I'll set the main axis alignment to main axis alignment dot center and main axis size to main axis size dot min. Next, I'll add some horizontal and vertical padding to this column so that the card background does not stick to the column. Let's also make the corners of this card rounded by setting the shape property to rounded rectangular border. And finally, I'll set the font size of this play button text as 30. This looks good enough for now. So in the on press of this raised button, I'll get the navigator of current context and then call push replacement on it. And here I'll push a new gameplay screen, which will start the game. So now if I save this and then click on the play button, 
you can see game starts as expected. This completes our initial version of main menu. In future when we'll add sound effects and background music to this game, we will add options in main menu to turn it on or off. But now we'll have to modify the game over menu to display a button using which players can go back to main menu. So in the last video we added a bunch of overlay widgets in dino game class. But these widgets don't really have to be part of dino game class. We can extract out all of them into separate reusable widgets. For this I'll create one more folder called widgets. And in this folder we'll have a pause menu dot dart, a game over menu dot dart and a hard dot dart file. So let's start with pause menu dot dart. In here I'll create a new stateless widget called pause menu. And then I'll just copy the whole code from build pause menu method of dino game and paste it in the build method of pause menu class. As you can see, we have called the resume game method from the on press of this icon button. This will not work now because resume game method is not available in this pause menu. So to make this work, we'll need to store a reference to resume game method. For that, I'll add a final reference of type function in pause menu. Let's name this as on resume pressed. And as this is a final field, I'll add it to the pause menu constructor as well. Also, as pause menu cannot function properly without this on resume pressed, I'll mark it as required. And to make sure that we don't accidentally pass in null here, I'll add an assert which will stop the execution if on resume pressed is null. Now, in the on pressed of this icon button, we can replace this resume game with on resume pressed dot call. This will execute the function referenced by on resume pressed. And this completes the pause menu widget. Now, in dino game, instead of calling build pause menu, we can create an instance of pause menu widget. And as the on resume pressed, I'll set the resume game method. Now, we can safely remove this build pause menu method. Now, similar to this, let's create a stateless widget called game over menu in game over menu dot diet. For this class, I'll copy all the code from get game over menu and paste it in build method of game over menu. So in this code, we need the value of score and we also need a reference to the reset method from dino game. This remove visit overlay and resume engine are not needed here because once players click on restart button, we can call these two methods in the reset method of dino game itself. So I'll cut them from here and then paste them as the last step in reset game method of dino game. So again, similar to pause menu, I'll add two final fields in game over menu. One for getting the score and the other one for getting reference to reset method. Both will be marked as required and both have to be non-null. Now for score, we don't have to change anything. And instead of this reset, we'll have to write on restart press dot call. Now in dino game, we can replace get game over menu by instance of game over menu widget with its score as score and on restart press as reset. And we can delete this method now. Finally, I'll perform same steps for hud.dart2. It will replace the build hud method from dino game. The only difference in this class is that it needs a reference to value notifier of type int. This will be useful for displaying the remaining lives on top right. And once hud class is ready, we can replace call to build hud with instance of hud widget remove build hud completely now let's build and check if everything is working fine okay we can see the hud with pause menu on left and lives on the right if i press the pause menu button we are still able to see the pause menu and on pressing resume the game gets unpaused correctly now let's wait for dino to run out of lives and yes we are still able to see the game over menu now that everything is correctly refactored and working, let's make changes in game over menu to display one more button using which players can go back to main menu. 
For this, I'll wrap the icon button inside a row widget so that we can show two buttons side by side. As one of the button will be for going back to main menu, it will be difficult to indicate this by using a icon button. So I'll change this icon button to raised button and instead of icon, I'll use a text widget displaying retry with font size as 30. And for main menu, I'll just duplicate the same raised button and change the text to main menu. But instead of calling on restart pressed, we'll have to navigate to main menu by calling push replacement on navigator of current context. Let's set the main axis alignment and main axis size to center and min respectively so that these buttons are nicely centered. Now let's start the game and check how the game over menu looks. And as you can see, we now have these two buttons in game over menu. And on pressing the main menu button, we are navigated back to main menu screen. Before we end this video, I'll just add some padding to right of retry button and to left of main menu button so that they don't stick together. So that was it for this video. Now we have a working main menu screen and we can add more buttons on this menu if required. In the next video, we'll probably start adding some nice sound effects and background music to this game. As I'm going to publish this game on Play Store, I've started an early access program. Basically, people who are part of this program will get access to the most latest builds of Dino Run, containing features that will eventually get added to the final release. So if you are interested in improving this game by testing it and finding bugs, you can contact me on any of the social links given in the description box below. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do hit that like button and consider subscribing to this channel for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.